I guess the experience I brought to share is uh, the idea, which is not a new one, but one which is sort of being revitalized recently. And that is about the importance of looking at the sources from which crops were derived, the wild gene pools, which are much more extensive in terms of, in a genetic sense, but also in terms of traits. Uh, and they've been largely ignored, at least they haven't been systematically characterized in the majority of species. And that material represents uh, the foundation from which crop improvement will depend on. Uh, we're trying to introduce new variation to meet a number of particular agronomic uh, needs. Uh, resistance, tolerance to drought, uh, to heat in particular, also cold, but a range of other correlated agronomic factors including disease resistance, uh, the access to nitrogen in the soil from symbiotic bacteria and so on. So we treat the, the task of chickpea improvement as being one that involves multiple interrelated uh, objectives. What can be done for the small-scale farmers? You do things to make genetic changes in the crops that could make those systems more efficient, make them yield better, make them more tolerant to diseases and pests, uh, make them more tolerant to variable climate. And, and these sound like broad statements, but in fact, each one of those things impact productivity on small-scale farms where access to inputs is limited. So genetic improvement is a surrogate for inputs, right? If it's more efficient at generating its own nitrogen, you don't need to add nitrogen. If it's more efficient at accessing phosphate from the soil, you don't have to add phosphate. If it can grow on acidic soils where aluminum toxicity is a problem, you expand the range of cultivated cultivation possibilities.